Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with an everyday carry fountain pen video. So, it's been a while. I've been swapping out some of my pens, using older pens and things like that. But this is what I have currently inked. So, let's talk about, <coughs> excuse me, talk about the pens. So, they're in my usual pen pot. So, this is the um, current pens that I have inked up. And I'm going to go through them one at a time and discuss the... Uh, my feelings about each particular pen. So I'm back into my book, last entry, 18th of July 2020, where I did the video on everyday carry work pens, which I am going to be changing soon because these um, generic Chinese brass pocket pens, which I've been using, I've used them at work since July, and in all honesty, I'm not really happy with them. They're Yes, the actual pen body is robust and everything else, but the actual um, cap, the sealing mechanism where it screws in is plastic and it it's pretty poor quality. They are not Coveco Sport, AL Sport or um, even Delight Classic Brass Alpha standard pens. They're a lot cheaper and of course they're they're not breaking but they're getting there. They're not going to last many more months of uh, use at work. So. I'll be changing those and doing an everyday carry work pen video. But for today, this is my everyday carry home pen video. So let's start off with, in no particular order, I'm just going to pick these out and we shall see where we're at. Okay, so first pen is the Moonman M2. Now, I have reviewed this pen. This has got a um, Fude nib though, and it is a very, very different writing experience to the standard Moonman M2 fountain pen. I'll show you why in a moment. Unscrew the cap, and I've just completely forgotten what date it is today. 24th of November. Let's make sure this is in shot. I've eye-dropped this pen, by the way, obviously. Um, holds an awful lot of ink. And with this Fude nib, it really is a great pen. And the ink is... I'll just better just double-check this one to make sure I am actually writing about the right one. Yeah, it is. So, there we have the Moonman M2 Fude Nib, Diamond Christine. Um, Fude Nib. So we've got this bent upturned nib, where if you hold it vertically, you get a extra fine line. You go lower and lower, and it throws out lots of... That was just the feed touching the paper there, but it throws out an awful lot of ink. So, huge amount of line variation without any pressure, you just adjust the pen angle. And I didn't know if I was actually going to enjoy writing with this, but I prefer it an awful lot to the typical Moonman nib that you do get in these pens. And I can see that this is... I'm trying to get this to focus. I have a feeling that is a Jin Hao nib. Now, the Moonman M2 fine nibs, I find them dry, not a great writing experience, not scratchy but just unpleasant to write with. Um, and you sort of get to the point where you're kind of hoping that the ink will run out so that you can change the, um, change the ink for something else and all the rest of it. But with this Fude nib, 
in this huge ring, ring reservoir. This uh, this pen really does hold its own. Um, I'm using this uh, moleskin notebook, and this is not the best paper. And diamine Christine does have a nice reddish sort of sheen to it, which is not going to be apparent on this paper. But anyway, moving on. So that's the uh, Moonman M2, and let's go into UK fountain pens Namisu now this is the Namisu Nova comes in different colors this is the blue version and it is a nice I suppose torpedo shaped clipless metal pen unscrews metal section could be a bit slippery for some nice decent quality nibs Oops, Nami. Start that one again. Nami Sue Nova Blue. And this one is a broad. Uh, which one is this? Broad nib. And the ink is the wonderful. Pilot Hiroshizuku Shinkai. Decent wetness with these broad nibs on these pens. Um, I've had a few Namisu pens and they are really, really good pens. Um, the well made, well machined, actually quite heavy. Uh, but very comfortable to hold. This sort of matte finish is really, really quite tactile. It's smooth, but it's, yeah, th there's some texture there. Uh, the metal section is quite long, but I don't find it particularly slippery. It is polished, but that's going to be an issue for some people, for sure. Um, and this is, yeah, really, really nice metal pen. Relatively affordable as well, considering the amount of uh, metal work that has gone into it. So that's the Namisu Nova. And this is the Namisu Nova Red. Now you think these two should look very similar, but one was a prototype and one is um, a... Uh, final production version. You know what, I'm thinking this isn't the Nova. Because this is definitely the uh, Nova. Because I recognise the uh, conical shape here. I have a feeling that this is actually the Comet. So this is the Namisu Comet, not the Nova. I must have written that down completely incorrectly at some point and just carried on um, propagating it. So that's the blue one is the Namisu Comet. So that's that one. This is the Namisu Nova in red. All metal pen. This is the aluminium anodized version. And this thing, uh, this is a medium nib. Quite a lot finer than than the uh, broad. Right, using Noodler's Dragon's Napalm. I'll talk about the pen to begin with. Once you can, well, there we go. So you can see same coloured anodised uh, aluminium section same decent sort of uh, nib. Um, I will say that the converters are not included, they are an optional extra but it takes standard international um, ink cartridges and converters so that's easy enough. All metal pen not suitable for eyedroppering. Uh, same with the uh, Namisu <laughs> Comet that I was talking about. Noodler's Dragon's Napalm, it's an interesting colour, it's it's like an orangey red, um, and I want to do some work with this because it's it's an interesting 
ink when you flush it out of a pen because there is a real sort of tinge of fluorescent green in it which isn't apparent when you write on any typical paper be it fountain pen friendly or otherwise I don't know what it is it's it's an interesting ink it's not a really bright vibrant red but certainly one to uh, one to consider stay on the Namisu theme with the Namisu Naos satin black um, nice octagonal is it octagonal one two three four five six seven yes octagonal uh, barrel all metal again polished metal cap with this flat end and these um, knurled bits up here once again huge long polished metal section And this is a medium nib as well, which is, in my mind, erring towards broad rather than the medium of the Nova Red there. And this is just a um, cartridge, nothing fancy. The ink flow is excellent. I really enjoy writing with this pen because it's, it's quite comfortable to hold. Um, and it looks great. Really, really nice looking pen. Available in different uh, different colours, different finishes. So that's the Namisu Naos. Right, let's talk about this little pocket pen. Twisby AL Mini in gold. And this is a great looking, industrial looking pocket pen. It is available in different colours. It's quite short, obviously, but it, you can write with it uh, unposted. Oh, trying to write over the camera isn't easy. Twisby AL Mini Gold. This has got a medium nib. Now, I'm finding this medium nib in this Twisby is a little bit finer than some of the other um, Twisby medium nibs. He was a good writer, um, no issues there, but just an observation more than anything else. You can't have consistency uh, with something as precise as a nib. Screw to post, as you can see, which is kind of annoying uh, for a pocket pen, but becomes quite a decent size once it is posted. And this is a nice ink, KWZ Baltic Memories. As with all of the uh, KWZ inks, slight smell of vanilla with it, which is quite nice. <laughs> I really do like it. And this is a nice sort of dark tealy blue. Nice ink. Looks good in this pen against the uh, against the gold piston filling mechanism in the section there. The section is quite short so be aware of that. We'll be re there will be a review of this pen coming up fairly soon. Uh, I'm going to move on to, let's stay on the yellow and gold theme. So this thing, Faber Castell Ondoro, which is an interesting resin fountain pen. A little bit short I'd say. You can post it and it posts quite securely. The cap is very very heavy and it really does back weight the pen. Um, so it's definitely a pen I write with on postage. I will be doing a review of this pen fairly soon. And yes, it's a fine nib and I do actually enjoy writing with good quality fine nibs. The ink is Diatrementis Midnight Blue which I think goes really well with this uh, this colour of pen. Once again another uh, is that octagonal? No it isn't. One, two, three, hexagonal fountain pen. Stay on the orange theme for now. 
with a cheap Chinese fountain pen. Keiko Retro, which is, I suppose, very similar in many ways to the Parker 51 with this hooded nib. And it's quite, a, it's quite a girthy pen. There is a weird sort of ink window there of no real practical value. It is a cartridge converter, and in the box you get a um, cartridge, a couple of cartridges, I think, and also a converter, which is quite nice, especially for the price. Uh, pretty, pretty decent. And this is a medium nib. Um, I'm not entirely sure how medium it is because it is bordering on fine. Um, but it's a decent enough writer. The ink is diamine or diamine sunset, which is a nice orange. I like this orange. Really nice, dark but still colourful orange. Nice clip on the pen, contrasting blue ball on there. And it's a pretty functional clip. Right, so final yellow orange pen is this. Really, really nice pen. This is the uh, Platinum Pro Scion Citroen Yellow. And it's got a matte finish to it. Metal pen. So it's like a powder coating on there. This is a medium nib. It is a Japanese medium, but it's still, you know, pretty good. Um, lovely pen to write with. And this is Platinum's own mixable ink, Platinum Dark Violet, which I was hoping was going to match this pen really well. And it's a absolutely disgusting, dirty sort of purpley brown colour. It actually looks better in the camera there than it does in real life. It's um, yeah, it's not an ink that I uh, particularly like, but it's a really, really nice writing pen. Really nice to write with, there is a bit of a step up there, decent section to hold, but it's quite short. You don't feel these threads, but you do feel the step up. So, move on to the next page. And let's go with something that we all know and some of us love. Lamy Safari Umbra. Now this is a second hand pen, as you can see it's been bashed about, but it came in a job last lot of pens, and it's actually a really nice pen. Um, medium nib, and this is another KWZ Ink. This is foggy green, which is a um, let's have a look at it. It's it's basically a dark green black, but there is actually some green in there that's really quite apparent, and I prefer this a lot to um, uh, the. Um, Colt Pen's Deep Dark Green, which kind of looks a little bit of a mucky green, very dark mucky green, but this has got much more of a green hue to uh, hue to the ink, as you can see in that little bit there. So, yep, decent ink. Once again, smells a little bit of uh, vanilla. Right, Lamy Vista. The clear version of the Lamy Safari. However, I am going to be reviewing this pen very soon because there are some differences that I really, really want to talk about. Which this pen has completely different to the um, to the Lamy Safari. Which do I prefer? Well, 
hit the subscribe button and, uh, and wait for that video because I'm not going to uh, reveal all in this uh, this everyday carry video, but it is a demonstrative version of the Lamy Safari. Medium nib again. This ink, oh, that was a bit of a skip there. Sorry about that. I think that was me. KWZ Raspberry. So, decent writing experience from those pens, typically. Uh, let's see what else have we got. Oh, another Twisby. Twisby Precision, which is a little bit different from their usual um, Twisby fountain pens. I mean, a lot of people know and love the Eco. The Twisby AL uh, Mini, which I have here, is quite similar because they are demonstrator fountain pens. This is an all metal fountain pen, this um, Twisby Precision, and it's very, very industrial in its design with this hexagonal uh, barrel and cap with a very aggressive looking clip angle where that goes on there we've got the Twisby logo all metal pen we've got this finial down here with two um, o-rings which hold the cap in position on caps really easily in less than one turn matching brushed metal section which is still quite slippery in my mind uh, so some people certainly won't get on with that and an ink window this is a piston filler and let's do the writing see how this goes medium nib And what's the ink? I can't remember. It's gone completely out of my head. Diamine grey. So a nice darkish grey ink to go with this dark grey pen. Um, got a plastic cap liner and everything in there. So this is a really, really nice fountain pen. Posted, it becomes really quite long, but not exceptionally back heavy, which is uh, which is quite nice. Get that off there without turning the piston knob, which is there we go. Get that back in position. <laughs> so, just show you this ink because it it, it is a grey ink. It's looking quite dark or black there. There we go. So you can see what we're dealing with. Decent grey ink, diamine grey. Uh, stay on the grey theme with the Pelican M200 Moonstone. So quite a grey but still sparkly fountain pen. Piston filler. It's your typical M Pelican M200. Ooh, that was a bit of a hard start. I uh, don't think that was uh, the pen's fault though. It could have just been me. medium nib, decent wet uh, uh, wet nibs in these, this is also uh, diamine grey decent ink capacity, piston filling fountain pen, review of this pelican pen coming soon I think my dog's going to kick off because we've got uh, some workmen closing off the road outside Right, next pen, all metal pen, Faber Castell Hexo. Probably my most disappointing pen of, well, definitely my most disappointing pen of 2020. And yeah, it's certainly going to be up there in my most disappointing pens of all time. Mainly because it's just not a good writer. kind of use this as a knockabout pen for taking the odd rough note at home. A 
this is a broad nib and if I'm a Castell nibs tend to be quite fine for a European nib which is annoying as you can see I mean it, it looks finer than the me medium pelican nib there and the ink is pelican uh, tanzanite Check out my review of the Father Castell Hexo if you want to know um, why I don't like this pen. But I mean, we're beginning to see why because there is a bit of skipping on the. There we go. This is, I mean, it's it's yeah, not a good writer. I haven't played around with this nib um, very much. I have I have tweaked it and it is better, but it is not right. I kind of gave up. So that's the Father Castell Hexo. Stay on the grey theme. Here we go. Cross Bailey Light. One of Cross's cheapest fountain pens. All plastic fountain pen. There is this metal cap band. And it's, in my view, a really decent pen. I like the um I like the pen overall. Shut up. Workmen outside just shouting to each other constantly. Dog will kick off at him because he doesn't like idiots shouting. Cross Bailey Light, medium nib, and this is a cross black cartridge. Because this pen takes proprietary cross cartridges, and this is the only cross pen I have, so this is going to be a case of refilling this pen. Um, not suitable for eyedroppering because of that metal screw and th thread in there rather um, so review of the cross bailey light will be coming to my channel soon so stay tuned for that ah right that's the grey pens out of the way let's move on to this rather lovely looking there we go he's going to start barking he might stop in a minute hopefully I'll just pause the video a moment Right, try again. Okay, so here we go. Very, very attractive looking fountain pen. And why has my. Uh, lost everything. There we go. Right. Okay, so very attractive fountain pen. This is the. Oh, I'll get this right. Sailor Shiki, Shikiori Yodaki Burgundy. <laughs> And it is a translucent, I suppose, demonstrator fountain pen, matching coloured section. Yodaki. With a fine nib, you don't get any options with Sailor. Um, which is a shame and there is an awful lot of feedback but it's a really 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 nice writer so Sailor Black is the ink use the ink cartridge that I had for Sailor because once again proprietary cartridges which kind of annoy me but you know it is what it is I'm just going to get these pens out because I actually want these in some sort of order. So that's that one, that's that one. So they're all the same and there we go, right, okay. Not long to go now. We'll stay on the Japanese theme with another burgundy coloured fountain pen. Now, this is the Sailor Le Cool in Garnet, which is a sort of I suppose burgundy solid colour. There is a bit of a metallic sheen to it, but it's not anything more than that. And I'm completely getting confused with these. Com uh, garnet. Fine nib again. A 
short pen really short pen that posts quite well decent pen and I like these pens an awful lot because they really are a nice pen to write with same series we've got the no this isn't the same series I'm getting these all all over the place this is the same series this is the sailorly cool rose quartz and it is a proper rose quartz color I did actually use a sailor um, co uh, converter in here because I wanted a different ink fine nib diamine cerise there we go nice vibrant pink color not hugely saturated but still colorful enough to uh, to write with really nice pen we'll be doing reviews of all the pens that I have here which I haven't reviewed so far so Sailor Le Cool Morion so this is a black version of the Sailor Le Cool and you could hear that squeak you know not the best quality but of course this is a very very inexpensive fountain pen and there are some black sparkles in here which are I'll just retrieve my pelican moonstone put these side by side so we've got the moonstone which is much more of a demonstrator type gray fountain pen the lacool is a black opaque solid colored fountain pen both have sparkles in but the uh, sailor le cool morion has much much subtly sparkle in there so it's quite understated in comparison do a review of these pens in due course and you'll see how sparkly these are as you can see short pen but comfortable enough to write with not a pocket pen just one for small hands. Uh, Morion. Fine nib. And this is Sailor Black again. Just one final Japanese pen to talk about. Another grey pen. This is the uh, Platinum Curidas. Which... I think I'm going to be enjoying reviewing because I've got a lot of love and a lot of dislikes about this pen. Retractable nib, but a lot to really enjoy. Um, it's a great everyday carry for in the house. Medium nib. Oh, and this is the... Uh, grey version I can't remember what the actual naming of it is you know it's like car manufacturers they give uh, their paint jobs all sorts of uh, colours it's no idea it's the grey version anyway translucent demonstrator and this is just the platinum blue cartridge that came with the pen it will take a converter there we go, very satisfying. Right, final pen, a bit more colourful. Back to China. And this is a real surprise for me because I'd seen it reviewed in um, on other reviewers' channels and I wasn't really sold on it. And they'd got the different coloured version, there's like a blue version, things like that. And it, it just didn't appeal to me at all. But I was aware that it was available in this rose colour, which I actually really, really like. Um, and as far as the pen goes, it's actually a pretty good pen. Uh, this is, I'll try and get some light on this. And you can see there's a really nice chatoyancy in there. It looks quite vintage. This is the, uh, it seems to be going under different names. 
but I bought this as a Moon Man fountain pen. So this is the Moon Man New Moon. Oops, New Moon in rose. This is the rose colour, and I say that this is a fine nib, but I believe this to be much more of a uh, of a medium nib. And this ink is online, German company online. Row, uh, no, it's not rows. I'm always using online rows. This is online. I've uh, completely hashed this up. Online cranberry in the run up to Christmas. And I can't even spell cranberry. Try again. One last time. Cranberry. There we go. Which is a scented ink and it smells. If you're really, really thoughtful and actually really smell the ink, it's got a vague smell of cranberry to it. So, that's the final pen. 20 pens. Is it too much? Not really. I don't think so. Not for, uh, not for rotating my pens. So, there we go. Thanks very much for watching. And I shall see you next time. Bye.